AMD CPUs have a huge vulnerability, but they're not fixing all of them. NVIDIA's got some wonky high-end GPUs over in China, and SteamOS finally coming out for other devices. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, August 12th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the big report that came out of DEF CON, which is that AMD CPUs have a massive vulnerability known as Synclos. This affects nearly every CPU AMD has released since 2006. So that's basically the time it took for somebody born when the first CPU came out to now being an adult and it again affects a lot of different CPUs. And it's being reported that this is an incredibly severe vulnerability because not only does it actually affect everything at the deepest levels, but that it can't actually be removed by reinstalling your operating system or just resetting your device. With the reports being that if you have a device that's been affected by this vulnerability and has had malware installed, you're just better off destroying the device and getting rid of it entirely. Now, Amy came out and said, We've known about this. They gave us heads up. We've been patching it out of some of our most critical servers like Epic Chips and all of the high-end stuff. And we're gonna be bringing it out to more CPUs as time is going on. But again, this is like many vulnerabilities that are out there, which is that you actually need kind of physical access to the system. You have to get kernel level access in the first place, which is extraordinarily hard to do in many cases. And if you have that level of access, this is not the only nefarious thing that you can do. The thing that makes this so distinct is the fact that it just continues past when you reinstall your operating system or normal mitigation measures. So there's been some time for AMD to work on this, but they did announce recently that they are not gonna be patching every CPU that has this vulnerability. It being reported that Ryzen 3000, 2000, and the original Ryzen will not get a patch for this Synclose vulnerability. Not because they can't, but because AMD says that they're outside of their software support window. So if you have one of these very popular chips that existed for a little bit, you're on Threadripper 1 or 2000, then you're just going to have to deal with the fact that your system is vulnerable to this and you won't likely be able to detect it, especially if there has been something that has infected your system. Tom's Hardware says that they're gonna follow up for clarity, especially because uh, security vulnerabilities should be prioritized. Additionally, there are older processors than Ryzen 3000 that are getting the patch for this. So it's not 100% clear and the latest Ryzen 9000 are not included in the list. So a lot of this still has to be figured out, but uh, you know, AMD is saying that they're not gonna do it because they don't have to. They're outside their software support window. Not great vibes. And there haven't been great vibes with regards to Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs, but we talked about last week in Friday's episode of Hot News that companies started putting out the BIOS updates for the microcode patch that should bring stability to the systems. Asus has it for select motherboards as well as MSI. ASRock, I believe, also released uh, a BIOS update for some of their motherboards over the weekend. And at least according to preliminary benchmarks by Jay's Two Cents and a few other outlets, it does appear like there's very little, if no, performance loss because of this BIOS update. It has nothing to do with actually removing performance. However, as mentioned in Friday's episode, especially as Falcon Northwest is trying to point out, this is not the only thing you need to do. You already had to kind of do the previous BIOS updates as well as tweak a few things, which could reduce performance a little bit from just having it completely unlocked and overclocked and uh, pegged to 100% like it normally is. There is gonna be a downgrade in performance from that, but if you've already done all of that and then you install this microcode patch doesn't look like it's really going to affect too much on your end. But Intel is being affected, especially with their large stock market loss and their bad financials as they reported in their Q2 earnings. And so they are canceling one of their biggest events of the year. Intel innovation is not going to be happening later this year, which was supposed to be used to unveil Arrow Lake, their next generation of desktop processors. This was supposed to take place next month, but Intel announcing that they are canceling it due to financial concerns, which a lot of people got concerned about because that's when we were supposed to find out about the next gen CPU. So there was just the question of, are we still getting Arrow Lake this year? To which Intel has already responded and said that everything it has not changed with regards to the launch of Arrow Lake. It's just events and announcements don't appear to be something that they're gonna be prioritizing at least right now. And I, right now, I'm gonna prioritize Reese. He's gonna take 
time on the screen for me. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend and I'll get your week started off right with some deals. Because first up, we have the Raid Max Sound On X USB microphone, which is currently going for $29.99, making it $30 or 50% off. And then next, we have the Logitech G Pro X wireless gaming headset going for $114.99, making it $115 or also 50% off. And then lastly, we have the Superflower LEDX Platinum SE 1000 watt 80 plus platinum fully modular power supply available in white for only $124.99 making it $125 or also 50% off. But don't forget while 1000 watts may be overkill there are a lot of deals currently on Superflower products so you can find one that's more, more in line with what you need. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well Reese, what's the deal? with China getting all the cool GPUs. That was my best Jerry Seinfeld. That was really bad. I'm so sorry you had to sit through that, but I'm also so sorry that I have to sit here without the GPUs that China seems to be getting, which are upgraded versions of the 4090D and 4080 Super. It's being found that there are some servers out there that actually have double the VRAM amount on the 4090D and the 4080 Super, making it 48 gigs and 32 gigs respectively on these cards, which is very good for generative AI models models, doing large language models, all of that kind of stuff makes it so that they're very prominent for AI machine learning. But one of the questions that's popping up is, who is making these cards? Because it appears that they've been on the open market in China since the end of June. So it's been sold to consumers in case you want them. It's not that much more expensive, around $700 more for the 4090D 48 gigabyte. So around $2,500 US equivalent in order to get a very high VRAM amount of the 4090D. But as far as we know, there haven't been many modders who have been able to double the memory count on these GPUs and then also to sell them on the market appears to be kind of confusing. So is this something that's condoned by NVIDIA directly, or is this some company that's decided that they're gonna sell the AI versions of these cards? It's intriguing. I'm curious to find out more about how this is happening because I, I would want one, I don't need it, but I'd, I'd like it, which is how I'm feeling about this next Battle Mage card that we're getting leaks of. Battle Mage hitting the scenes. First one we're spotting out in the wild. It appears to be the equivalent of the ARC A580 from Battle Mage, so the B580. So it looks like it's gonna have an increase in VRAM amount, as well as having faster VRAM speed, but the memory bus is smaller, so its overall memory bandwidth is gonna be slower than the A580. Whether or not that's gonna impact performance too much, remains to be seen, but 12 gigabytes of VRAM compared to the eight gigabytes at 19 gigabits per second versus the 16 gigabits per second, but that equates to a total memory bandwidth of 456 gigabytes per second, as opposed to the A580's 512. So a reduction in some ways, an improvement in others. We'll have to see how the GPU performance actually is, and price point obviously makes a big difference here because as the adage goes, there's typically not bad GPUs, it's just bad performing GPUs. Although I do have a wrinkle with that statement because there are objectively bad GPUs that like just don't work anymore. But in the context of like things that are launching a B580 that is $50, I'm probably not gonna sneeze at that. It's not gonna cost that. That's just me. I'm, I'm being hyperbolic for the sake of argument here. And SteamOS has been the sake of many arguments because it's been wondered what would it be like if we could get SteamOS on all these other handhelds? Would Linux adoption go through the roof? Could we actually get it on mainstream desktops? Could you install, would that ruin Windows? Like, how is this all gonna play out? But now we're getting more details that in the latest patch on SteamOS, Valve has added support for extra RRG ally keys, likely meaning that the launch of SteamOS for other devices appears to be at least somewhat imminent, just like Half-Life 3 is, because Valve has said that this is something they are prioritizing. Getting a general release of SteamOS is important to them and appears to be one of the next steps in what they're going to be doing, and having support for RG ally keys in the patch seems to indicate that they are ready to move forward on this, and especially with our upcoming review of the RG Ally X, it's still just very clear that the weakest part of any Windows handheld is Windows. And so if we could get SteamOS, that would be great. But then it would also make it so that I probably would finally switch to Linux on my gaming desktop. I'd, like for my gaming PC, I don't really need Windows. If it can run, 90% of the games that are on Steam, that's probably 99% of the games that I have. And so I'm personally very excited for this future. This is a big step 
moving forward. I want to see it. I can't wait. Well, I'm sure ETA Prime is going to be like the first YouTube channel showing SteamOS and not like some SteamOS alternative on the ROG Ally. I'm just, I'm waiting for that day. And I honestly have been waiting for the day where I get to say that I, I don't really have to run this YouTube channel anymore. I can trust my team to do a whole lot. We're going to get to comment response in a second, but I just want to highlight this video that went out over the weekend on AMD's new iGPU, the Radeon 880M Benchmarks. This was a full team effort in a way that uh, hasn't happened in quite so many years. So we have our new writer and benchmarker who actually did most of the testing and writing for this. Then kind of me and Kyler revised the script to make sure that it was all ready to go. Kyler hosted it, Kyler and Michael filmed all the B-roll, and then Reese and Michael worked on the thumbnail, and Catlin edited this video. So it was like a full team synergistic thing which allowed us to get out a video on a laptop that I couldn't have done by myself. I just don't have enough time, and this kind of allowed me to just enjoy my vacation in a way I otherwise wouldn't have. I would have been stressing that ASUS sent us this laptop, we need to get videos out about it, and we haven't done it. So I'm just, I'm thankful that uh, this video is out, and it's a testament to what UFD Tech is going to become as we move forward with uh, how everything is working behind the scenes. So uh, we released it a day early over on Floatplane, in case you want to check that out. But let's get to the comments from Friday episode of Hot News over on Float Plane with Northern Llama saying that, true, that AMD's marketing sucks, though I can't be too mad about the Zen 5 improvements. It's these MPG gains that lead to smaller form factors being possible and why AMD is about the only game in town for a decent handheld APU. Can't wait for Strix Point. I think you mean Strix Halo, because Strix Point's already out, but as we showed in the 880M video, which is a Strix Point laptop, it is good. It is, it is it is highly performant, beats things like the ROG Ally quite handedly. Um, I'm excited for it, I, I agree. That doesn't necessarily mean that people who want peak performance really want the 9700X, $350, $330 CPU to just be an efficient CPU. But then over on YouTube, you got Chad Howell saying, I imagine that the shareholders are upset that Intel knew about the manufacturing issue with corrosion for over a year and never said anything until it became public recently. There's there's a lot of upvotes on this. The oxidation issue is such a different thing than the instability problem that we're having. The fact that it's all being conflated into this, like number one, the amount of chips that were affected by oxidation from Intel's own reports, which I guess you have to trust them for that, which I understand the skepticism on, but it was addressed in 2023. No new CPUs are being produced with it. It got fixed, they addressed it, and it's likely a very minor subsect of CPUs that are actually suffering from this. Whereas with 13th and 14th gen, it's nearly all of them. It's all Raptor Lake CPUs that are 65 watts and higher. Much bigger issue, but even then, even then, neither of those problems are what the shareholders are suing over. Neither of those problems are the massive multi-billion dollar losses that Intel is taking for IFS or their foundry services. That's really where Intel is just completely urinating money, is trying to get IFS set up and ready to compete with the likes of TSMC. The oxidation issue, as much as it is a problem, is a blip in terms of the balance sheets of what's actually going on. I don't think shareholders would have a class action action lawsuit over the oxidation issue, especially if they're going to replace it. If you can get an RMA for it, you can prove that it was there. Like, I understand that having problems that aren't disclosed to the public and are dealt with behind the scenes isn't what everybody wants, but it is how companies do things. It's not like Intel had the oxidation issue, did nothing about it, and then Gamers Nexus all of a sudden discovered it and was like, hey, Intel, you should have done something about this. They've already done it. They've already fixed it. There's no more that Intel can actually do about fixing the oxidation issue besides if somebody discovers their CPU has a problem, it, they replace it. So it's a customer service issue moving forward, not an actual technical manufacturing issue anymore. And we got Dan B saying, it's kind of funny, the number of people getting upset about the 9700X performance when they plan to buy a 9800X 3D anyways. Yes, yes. I agree. And we got Radu saying, I think you got the Ryzen 9000 wrong. It's not for people with 7000 series, it's for the people with 3 and 5000. I stayed on the AM4 platform because I did not like the 95 degree normal temps of the 7000 series. Now I have a good reason for the upgrade. You say I'm wrong, but I, I already commented to this effect. I addressed that. I said that. I, I went on a whole spiel 
about how the average upgrade cycle is five to seven years. So this is for people who are on Ryzen 1, 2, 3000 or the FX series or potentially on something like the i5-4460. I discussed that in Friday's video. I agree. I'm, you're saying I'm wrong, but we're, we're on the same page. I agree with you. You're right. And who also is right is Joda Jackson saying every room is a bathroom with no plumbing. I mean, there you got the kitchen, which has plumbing, but you, hey, if you don't need to clean it up, I guess. And then we got Yojo Mojo Dojo saying, interesting how some of the most prominent tech tubers are saying avoid Intel, whilst others are suggesting that many BIOS updates will solve the hardware issue or future hardware issue of degrading chips. Rather than warn consumers of the risk, they say, don't worry, it's fixed or going to be fixed. Sponsored by Intel, um, yeah, good looking out. I'm just, I'm curious, because I keep seeing these comments of people being like, well, some people aren't saying, I, I just, I don't come across, who is not calling Intel out? for all of these problems. I'm just, I'm curious with how some are doing, who is it? Who's the others? Whomst? Whomst is making all of these claims saying it's okay to buy Intel right now and it's not a problem that your, your CPUs degraded before the patch came out. Who? Everywhere I look, everybody's saying avoid Intel until things can get fixed. This is not good. But you know what? I'm gonna avoid you till tomorrow. No more hot news until then.